Good morning, baby freshman. How are you? Good? Kind of kind of quiet. Morning, guys. There were two brothers who went to the Taft School. Their names were Sherburn Rockwell Jr. and Davis Rockwell. They were 41 and 44. Well, they were class of 41 and 44. They were not extra slow children. And they wanted to do something for Taft, something that they believed in. So they gave us a, uh, they gave us a gift which allows us to bring artists from all over the country to speak with you at Taft and often to have a show in the gallery, which is the case this week. Our uh, Rockwell visiting artists are painters and printmakers, photographers, illustrators, animators, architects, and whatever else we can find to bring to Taft. Our first Rockwell artist for 2011 and 12 is Kurt Hansen. He's from Cornwall, Connecticut. Mr. Hansen began his education at Fort Wright College in Washington State. He moved to New York City, then to Boston, studying for three years in the Atelier of Yves Gamel, the Boston school painter who had trained with William Paxton. In 1979, Kurt Hansen came to Northwestern Connecticut, where he lives and paints for part of each year. And for the remainder of each year, uh, he spends it and paints there in Thailand. So I would like for you please to welcome Kurt Hansen. Uh, good morning. Uh, so uh, I'm very uh, grateful uh, for Luetta to um, find me. Uh, last year, uh, I, I received a little card with one of my paintings on it, and uh, someone who collected my work um, had donated uh, her, I don't know, her entire collection, I believe, to Taft, and, and, and a few of my paintings were in that. And uh, I was honored then, as I am today, but then it was to see my painting on the card. <laughs> and, then, and then come to see this absolutely stunning gallery. It's just a beautiful gallery. And, and then Luetta asked me if, if I would like to uh, show my paintings here. And uh, of course, I said yes. And uh, so here, here I am. And <clears throat> we hung them uh, on Sunday. Uh, so I hope you all have a chance to um, spend a little bit of time in front of them. These, uh, these slides don't really do uh, justice, as you will see. Um, uh, first, they're, they, they're appearing a little darker than the paintings are, um, my paintings are sometimes moody, but uh, not quite this much. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> uh, I, oh, so, so I, I just wrote down a few things to keep me on track, and the first thing I wrote down was uh, gratitude, and and I'm grateful for that. But I hope you all, all are grateful um, for, for the, this incredible school. I mean, it's just a, a very, very beautiful setting and seems a very good uh, feeling here. And um, I don't think there are many people in the world or students in the world that would have a better situation than than you do, and um, I think uh, attitude of gratitude is uh, a pretty good place to begin. Maybe each day with uh, with that, and 
and just appreciation. And it's not just for the school, but uh, for for your your parents. Um, in uh, I have a, <coughs> a Buddhist teacher in Thailand that s told me one time if if um, the gratitude for the the debt that I owe my parents. Uh, if I if I had to, uh, if I carried them on my shoulders around the world three times, I wouldn't be able to pay back the debt that that I owe them for uh, bringing me into this world and for giving me the basic things that we all kind of maybe take for granted about, like first off, learning to speak the language. I mean, it's in, it's really incredible, and I, I think, and it's not just your parents, but um, it's it's for every everyone, and and just for the beauty that uh, surrounds us, and uh, it's really a miracle, and. Um, it's very easy to take it for granted, but um, I think it's a very attractive thing, and other people are are aware of it, whether they know it or not. When they're around somebody who has that, and so um, I'm grateful for this time uh, to share with all of you. Uh, <clears throat> then, that, then the next thing that I wanted to talk about was observation. And uh, my paintings uh, are somewhat based upon observation. And this started when I was uh, very young, younger than you all. Uh, I was fortunate enough to grow up uh, in a small uh, uh, rural area in uh, northeastern Washington state and spent a lot of time very close to nature. And my mother had a uh, beautiful garden, and so I, I guess that experience uh, shaped uh, the direction and the course of my life. And um, I, I, even in within the context of art and painting. Uh, when I was young, I tried different uh, styles and different things, and uh, I always kept returning back to observing nature. And, um, and so then early on, uh, it was only in a book because I wasn't uh, surrounded by uh, beautiful uh, paintings that now that uh, one could almost take for granted in the Northeast because there's so many beautiful collections of art. Uh, but I saw them in books and I came upon a, a one artist that was named George Innes and uh, I, I guess I just, they just spoke to me and many years and many things happened, but when I ended up coming to New York City, I was able to, uh, I saw a large exhibition of his uh, work. I think there was 75 paintings, and um, I knew very clearly then, I was in my early 20s, uh, that uh, this was definitely the course that I, I wanted to pursue, and 
Um, his landscapes were not photographic. They, they were, they were um, more about uh, feeling and uh, not so much like a literal transcription of, of, of what, what things are factually, but more like uh, the feeling and the mood that they evoked. And um, I, so then later, <laughs> my son, uh, now he's living in Seattle, he carries that name as Innes <laughs> after George Innes, but I used it now as his first name, in Innes. And uh, 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 I'm very proud of my son. He's a hospice uh, nurse in Seattle. And uh, uh, that's just one, uh, another miracle in my life was to, to have, uh, just to see how he has uh, developed. He's now 26 and uh, uh, well on his own. And <clears throat> for a while there I was thinking, and maybe he was even thinking that art would be his his uh, career and and I somehow I, I knew that that was not that that wasn't in there though though I though it would have been nice but but uh, I didn't want to push push anything on on him and uh, but he always had a lot of uh, sensitivity around uh, cr creatures. Uh, and their suffering, and and uh, so it, it made perfect sense that he would go to our become our N, and then now uh, work with with people in the, at the time of their uh, uh, death, and <clears throat> so um, and I'm very lucky about that. Uh, the uh, next thing I wrote, wrote down this morning, I wrote these down. I get up uh, quite early because of uh, meditation uh, and have a couple hours before the sun comes up to uh, practice. Uh, I, I've been fortunate enough to meet uh, uh, many teachers, but one particular teacher in the south of Thailand, who um, uh, <coughs> has, you know, has shown me, um, pointed, I guess, to to uh, um, a, me a method of of it's called practice that is to cultivate awareness in the present moment. And that's what I start my day doing, and that's what really my life is. And it's no different than in the early morning practicing than when I'm walking back and forth uh, with a paintbrush and uh, painting because uh, there really, there really is no difference, and and he recognized that when I went to him, I, and he said, "How come you're picking this up so well? I, what is it you've done in your life?" And I told him about the painting for the last 25, 30 years, and he said, "Well, that's that's it then, because painting is not about um, thinking. It's about." awareness and seeing and observation. And there's a, there's a difference between thinking about something and experiencing something. And, and he said it kind of simply, it kind of didn't make sense to me for a while. He said, when you're aware, you're not thinking. And when you're thinking, you're not aware. And it sounds kind of strange, but, or at least it did to me, uh, 
but um, thinking, of course, it's a wonderful thing. We need to think. I have to think to speak to you right now. But we become so identified with the thinking that we cease to observe what's actually happening. And so the, the, the process of meditation, for me, has been one to develop that awareness to the point to where one can have an experience of actually seeing themselves thinking. So you, it's like, like I can see you, you're over there, I'm over here, but you can see your thinking the same way. It's like stepping outside and seeing your thinking. It's a very different experience than chasing after your thought and identified with it as who you are. And, and I don't know if any of that makes sense to you, but, but um, I believe it's a source of suffering for all of us that we become identified with not only our thinking, but our moods. So when we're sad, I am sad rather than sad is just a feeling that is arising and it's also by its very nature impermanent and it will pass. So I don't want to get too involved in that but it is related to, it, it's, it's something that's very uh, at the core of my experience. And, and awareness, um, another thing about awareness is, awareness is about the, this present moment. It's not about the future. It's not about the past. It's about right here, right now. I'm aware of this, I can hear this sound this, of of all of you, I can hear sound. Sometimes it's coming from one area or another. But um, it's very interesting how disconnected from that experience that people can become. And I think most people have become. I mean, uh, most people aren't even aware of their breathing. But there's there's a there's a real peace that can be can happen when you can just be aware. Be aware it's the body. Be aware of the body. Be aware from the hearing. Be aware of seeing. Be aware of smell, taste, touch, and and thinking. Thinking, too. It's all. These are all objects of our awareness. And uh, <clears throat> so, I would like to. I talked here for a few minutes, and I, and I would like to know it right now. Is is there anyone here that might have? Uh, Maybe maybe some thought came up that it, maybe it triggered a feeling that they had or wanted to say something. And uh, I don't want this to be all about about me. <laughs> Sound. <laughs> That's okay. Now I'm aware of sound. <laughs> okay, uh, what about the paintings? Does anybody may have something to say about that? Okay. 
So the person asked if I paint from photographs or do I paint on lo from location. Uh, for 30 years, I was, uh, one would almost say, religiously opposed to photographic uh, reference of any sort, and I painted everything open air from location. <clears throat> and then with the um, advent of uh, digital photography and uh, particularly I could do a commercial on Macintosh computers, uh, I, it, changed, it changed that for me and now I work mostly in the studio and I've embraced photography uh, as part of my uh, process. I don't copy the photographs, but they're like, um, you know, they, they are the compositions that are, are from them, and there's a very important part of it, and I'm not uh, apologetic or shy about it. it you know, I, I love uh, photography, and uh, I can't, I almost feel funny saying that now because I, I spoke, you know, against it for so long but um, it, you know it's just it's, it's changed and and when I go to Thailand a lot I I, I, uh, I have I do paint there I not a lot but I just love just traveling with the, the with the camera and in some ways I feel closer to nature that way than lugging around this paint box and, you know, kind of slavishly, <laughs> you know, a painting in front of nature. Uh, they, the paintings that I, that I did and some of the ones up here might have been early enough that they were that. Some of the paintings that I painted from nature are much, I would say most of them, are much uh, tighter than the paintings that uh, that I'm doing now using photography. So I'm not trying to copy the photographs, but I, it's a tool. So I, uh, but that's a very good uh, question. Is anybody else? Part of your brain than <laughs> the one that we usually use running from calculus to, I don't know, the War of 1812. <laughs>